I want to um, turn it back to the questions that we have um, from our audiences. And uh, thank you, Dr. Shah, for uh, addressing some of the questions uh, live. I, I managed to answer a couple of questions. Um, again, if you, if you posted a question, um, you can see whether it's answered or it remains open. Um, I, I'm looking right now at a question from Mike related uh, to a biochar. The question is, what have you found with the use of biochar when applied to the ground? Um, and I'm assuming uh, in, in, in poultry bedding context, uh, I don't know whether Jason and some of the work that you presented biochar has been also used. Um, we have seen biochar being an effective intervention, uh, mainly it has two modes of action. It acts as a cap, essentially kind of a barrier layer to reduce the emissions from the, uh, in this case, manure bedding or litter. Um, but also if it's uh, activated with acid, it can trap or target specific compounds uh, like ammonia in this case. I don't know, Jason, if you want to, um, you, ha you have something to add? Yeah, on no, I mean, I, I, I think you, you've you covered it. And we do have a uh, pilot scale system going in New York that's going to be making biochar from cattle manure. Um, there's obviously a lot of soil health benefits there. I, I Like you said, I think there's some opportunities to use that material um, as, as a filter media. Uh, there has been some research that shows that it has some benefits when incorporated in, into anaerobic digesters as well. Um, we are considering maybe doing some trials with with it as an additive to say a manure storage to look for some effects, but kind of waiting on the um, the bio the pyrolysis facility to be available to actually make enough material to to play around with. Um, I sh I will add too that you know I think biochar gets a lot of attention, but it's it's an expensive process, um, and I, I'm not sure the the dollars work out for farms to really dive in on this yet so no oh, thank you no that sounds exciting jason uh i'm looking at uh one one point also some of the questions that relates to biochar application and and uh, minerals be it uh, uh bentonite or other clay minerals there is the practicality of the method of application uh, the dusting issues that might be encountered. So there are some logistics also in its use that might be a, a complication. Um, the next question I have, Rick, uh, the question is, have any of you observed efforts to require fresh water from covered storage um, to be contained? Yeah, um, so I, what we're seeing in New York right now is I would say no, but we're also um, really advising folks to, um, if they're going to be covering a storage that's say near a feeding center, they really need to cup, you know, stay up on the management to keep those, you know, feedstuffs off of the cover. So it doesn't become a, a leachate kind of collection issue. Um, right now, I would say most of the farms are trying to just pump that into a vegetated area, into a field. Um, we're, you know, obviously not wanting to see any direct discharge of the material, but it's, it's not, uh, there's no containment requirement. And some farms, I, I will say, too, are, are using it as a, you know, kind of a, a reservoir and, and will repurpose that water and are using it some, somewhat as a storage. Um, yeah, I, I can speak for our uh, covered digesters and lagoons here. It's, it's treated similarly. There isn't a containment requirement. But like you said, Jason, there is a requirement to make sure it's not commingled with any manure or any other stuffs that would render it waste. So it is it is considered uh, clean water in that sense. Um, but some issues related to potential pressure, especially for digesters, for inflatable covers, there are some management concerns of uh, uh, basically the added pressure of the water weight on top of the digester system. Um, the following question, does pH have an effect in a liquid system on ammonium loss? Uh, uh, Jason, do you, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I would say yes, to some degree. Um, manure has a tremendous buffering capacity, um, but there is a lot of research, especially going on in Canada right now, looking at acidification of manure systems and some other strategies to reduce um, emissions. So, 
Yeah, uh, uh, Chris, exactly like Jason said, it is the chemistry is the same. It's just the buffer capacity for the liquids is there. It's just um, once you push the pH one way or another. Um, and w- especially with anaerobic digester systems, that has been a question in many places, just how much ammonia emissions are increased because of that chemistry change as a result of digesters. Um, um, the following question is, has the tree windbreak been studied to narrow down tree types or cer- certain evergreens? So oh. Dr. Sharara, I yes, responded to that question. The USDA, Sean Belt uh, of the USDA has a fact sheet and I provided a link to that. It uh, opens up a poster. I don't know if that's useful enough. If somebody wants to contact me, I can actually send them that fact sheet, which I cannot find. But yes, they did look at several different types of shrubs and trees that were planted in close proximity of poultry farms, poultry fans, to see how they would survive in the high ammonia environment. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Uh, just a quick comment about uh, acidification of liquid manure. I mean, there have been some attempts in Europe to uh, acidify uh, liquid waste in swine houses, but then you have to worry about hydrogen sulfide emissions increase. You might reduce ammonia, but you might increase hydrogen sulfide. Thank you. Uh, we have also a question from Brian, um, and I think that Jason, that's a, a question for you on um, yeah. the uh, the nitrous oxide emissions from feed pads um, and whether sure. that's been looked into. Uh, for one, I b- want to say hi, Brian. I've worked with you years ago. Good to see you again. Um, but uh, we are actually in the pro- we're we're waiting on our N two O analyzer to show up, um, but it's in the scope of work for um, our current project. Uh, so we're really focused on manure systems, but we are um, using our instrumentation to, to collect emissions from around, you know, barnyards in general and feeding areas. Um, there's also some work at Cornell um, looking at N2O emissions as it relates to, um, you know, changes in feed and so how that might impact emissions on and around the barns and feed areas too, so. That sounds exciting. Look forward to the outcomes of this work. Um, uh, I think uh, seeing no other questions, if anybody um, still have questions, um, you can add, uh, present it in the session, but also our contact information is, is on the webinar and the handout. So please don't hesitate to reach out with any other questions. Um,